Hi everyone, very good morning and welcome back to Graduate B. So from today onwards, we are going to start a new uh, ministry that is our Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, right? We are going to be talking about the various schemes as well as various initiatives that has been taken by this particular ministry. Fine. So let's start with it. And uh, there is, first of all, there is this particular piece of information which you can see when you will be... Uh, watching this particular video, right? This is all about the history of how Department of Social Justice and Empowerment has come into the existence, how it is like today, right? So first of all, before we start that, what are the schemes and initiatives under Department of Social Justice and Empowerment, we also have to talk about that who all are the beneficiaries under this particular ministry, right? So this ministry works for the welfare of which kind of people, which category of people and that becomes an important piece of information over here. So let's see this. See, number one, uh, you are having... Fine. So let's start with the scheduled cast, right? So because we, you are going to see these particular categories again and again in this particular piece of document. Hence, before starting with any particular kind of scheme, uh, machine, uh, your scheme, we have to know about that. What are the categories covered? So number one is your scheduled cast, right? Scheduled cast is who is going to describe the scheduled caste or who is going to decide the scheduled caste. So this is the authority rests with the president. Caste races or tribes within the caste races or tribe which are notified by the president under the article 341. Those, uh, these particular castes will be called as the scheduled caste. Now you will witness that I am not going to talk about scheduled tribes over here. Why? Because there is a separate ministry for the tribes and hence we are not including the tribes related concept over here. When we will be doing the tribes related ministry at that particular time we will get to know that what does schedule tribe means. So this is the meaning of schedule class. Please remember who has the authority to describe the schedule class. Moving ahead and talking about the backward classes. right? So we all know that such classes other than the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, there are other castes as well who are actually backward on the social and economic, uh, your economic educational indicators. So those are called as the backward classes and with respect to the backward classes, central government has the authority. Who specifies backward classes? Who includes in the list? So the, this is this particular authority rests with the central government. Central government specifies the list which is prepared by the backward classes. Now next is talking about the population of main target group. This gives you an idea. Yes. So this gives you an idea that how, what is the, your target population. Number one, schedule cast. We are having approximately 20 crores of scheduled caste people. Again, this particular data is as per your census 2011, right? After that, after knowing the population, one very important feature that is important to remember is which state has got the highest number of people. So for us, it is Punjab. Punjab has got the highest number of scheduled caste population. Next is other backward classes. So remember, there was a Mandal Commission report. It was a second backward class commission, right? It was constituted in the 1980s. It gave its but recommendations and as per its recommendation, it has identified, first of all, as per Mandal Commission recommendations, our government provided 27% reservations to all those people who belong to OBC caste, right? After that, there are two things. Regarding to the population of OBC uh, category, how much population we have in OBC category, that is not clear. So how do, we, how do we define that? So Mandal Commission has identified back in 1980s that 52% of the total population is OBC. Right? This was the target of, uh, this was the identification of Mandal Commission. 
After that, our NSSO, National Sample Survey Organization, they also conducted a 66th round of survey. As per that, they have estimated that 41.7% of total population of the country is the OBC population, right? So, not going much deeper into it, let's move forward. This thing I have already explained to you as per the Mandal Commission report, the Government of India has provided 27% of the reservations to the OBC category of people. Understood? Now, after that, one more thing, excluding creamy layer of the OBCs. Creamy layer means all those people who are already well off, who they, they do not, uh, they should not have be having any kind of reservation benefits, right? Why? Because they are already in a very comfortable financial position. So, for that, government has said that the creamy layer limit will be raised to 8 lakh rupees. All those people who are having an annual income of 8 lakh rupees, they are considered to be financially well off and hence they are not in the need of any kind of reservation. With that, next moving to our senior citizens. Who is a senior citizen? Very basic thing but still I have included. So all those people who are having an age of above than 60 years. Now next, what is the total population? So 10.36 crore is the total population but what actual number that I should remember is 8.56%. Remember the, uh, this particular thing that when you are writing the answers at that particular time such kind of data are important. Fine. You can use such kind of data in your answer writing and it is going to increase the value of your answers. So 8.56% like you can mention that as per census 2011 8.56% is the your uh, senior citizens population in India and it is estimated that it is going to increase up to 20% as well. Now victims of substance abuse, who are these? We are going to witness this particular term many a times in our document. Hence, we should know about it that who all are called as the victims of substance abuse. So a person who is addicted to alcohol, narcotics, psychotropic substances or any other addictive substances. As per the rough estimates, around 1% of our population is addicted to the substance abuse, right? Next, moving to the denotified tribes. So, denotified tribes, what are these? Anyone has an idea? All those who are watching the lecture, denotified tribes, what are these? Denotified tribes. Any idea about it? Okay, fine. So, what uh, happened was when the, the Britishers were there at the time of colonial period, there were some uh, tribes whom Britishers considered that they are genetically criminal tribes, right? So, they are, their behavior cannot be changed and hence they classified such tribes. There were around 200 or, some, 200 or some odd tribes that were categorized as a criminal tribe, right? There was an act formulated. If I'm not wrong, the act was formulated around 1870s, right? So, at that particular time, they were categorized as a criminal tribe. Once we got the independence, we denotified all such criminal tribes from such colonial act. Hence, we call them as the denotified tribes. And after that, nomadic tribe, you all know that those do not have. Yes. So, those do not have any kind of shelter. They just keep on roaming around, right? for the employment for, or for any other reasons, they are called as the nomadic tribes. Now, let's see. Nomads, these are the people who constantly stay on the move for earning their livelihoods. Most denotified tribes, they are categorized as SCST OBC, but few of the denotified tribes are yet not covered over here. There are two institutions. I am just briefly discussing about them, right? Not much to be discussed over here. There were two institutions that were formulated. Number one, we have National Commission for Denotified Nomadic and Semi-Nomadic Tribe. Remember that this is now not working. 
it was having a period of just for three years and after that it has stopped working what we have right now is a development health welfare board for the denotified and the nomadic community so this is the organization system that is working currently since the 2019 this particular organization has ceased to exist because its mandate was fulfilled we are going to see what was its mandates and etc further on in our chapter but right now just this piece of information will suffice right now next is disabled last piece of information as per census 2011 there are some 2.68 crore people 2.21 percent of the population that are disabled so that's it so now after this we have covered the basics We have covered that who all are the beneficiaries for us under this particular ministry. Understood? Now we are going to see that who all are the agencies or what are the agencies under this particular ministry who are working alongside with this particular ministry and we are going to witness them again and again. So starting with the commissions, we have got National Commission for Scheduled Caste. It is a statutory body. as well as it is a constitutional body it is a constitutional body has got recognition as well and you can skip the word statutory because whenever the options are going to come you just have the options you have to choose between the statutory and constitutional so please choose the constitutional body status right next is national commission for backward classes is it a statutory body or a constitutional body is it a statutory body or a constitutional body national commission for backward classes see uh in the constitutional as well as the statutory status constitutional status has got the more power that's why i have struck down these two a uh, very good so national commission for backward classes this has also been given the recognition fine and it is also a constitutional body next we have a national commission for safai karmcharis national commission for denotified nomadic and semi nomadic tribe that has been discontinued there are two foundations as well who are working for the welfare of the uh, categories of citizens that we have over here dr ambedkar foundation babu jagjeevan ram national foundation these are the two foundations that you can consider next is corporations so national schedule cast finance and development corporation national safai karmcharis finance and development corporation and backward class finance and development corporation we have such a kind of organization for scheduled tribes as well what is the work of these corporations so they provide the finance related support any kind of scheme is there like sidbi is there for the small industries right your export import bank is supporting the export sector so these particular organizations are supporting if there is any kind of scheme for the development of your scheduled caste or safai karmcharis etc so they are going to support right so these are the corporations that we are having under this particular ministry now starting with our first scheme right so before starting with this this is a scheme for self employment for the rehab of the rehabilitation of manual scavengers right so manual scavenging was quite much in the practice from our, in our nation from since a very long time but obviously this is a very bad practice is it is having a very huge impact on the human health and we cannot just avoid it we cannot just uh, skip it right there are so many people every year who die because they are uh, entered into a septic tank for the manual cleaning and hence we cannot allow it to do like this there are so many new initiatives that has been taken uh, by various governments right so uh, one of such initiative is bandikoot bandikoot is a electro robot right so it does the cleaning on behalf of such manual scavengers right so such kind of electronic as well as the technology related inventions are also being 
done. So Bandikoot is the invention of the Kerala government. They are using it for the scavenging purposes, right? Not was not related over here, but that is a surplus information that I told you. Now, when does this was launched? So it was launched in the January 2007. What is our aim? So aim is to rehabilitate the manual scavengers who all are left in the alternative occupation. There is an act which has been made in order to complete this. What is that particular act? Prohibition of employment as manual scavengers and their rehabilitation act. So what we are going to do? We are going to rehabilitate the manual scavengers as well as their families, their immediate families who are suffering from this particular problem of manual scavenging. Number one. Now next is the implementing agency. Who is the implementing agency? So National Safai Karmchari Finance and Development Corporation. Just now we read that this is an organization. This is a company. This is a corporation under the ministry. Next, very important. Government of India is going to provide the 100% of funds for this particular scheme. The time of this initiative is extending to the period of 25 to 2025 to 26 right so this is going to be the period of operation obviously the scheme was launched back in 2007 and it has been extended again and again right obviously we need the applicability of this particular scheme now we are going to quickly see that what are the benefits that are going to be provided now before reading this lengthy piece of document i'm going to tell you uh, two things over here first of all listen how the benefits are going to be provided, right? So there are three components to it. Number one is a stipend. Number two is the one-time cash assistance, right? One-time cash is provided. And number three is the capital subsidy. Capital subsidy means suppose there is a project which is to be launched, asset development related project, correct? So what you are giving as a one-time cash, uh, cash assistant that is to be consumed by the manual scavenger, right? It is not going to create any asset for us. But government is also providing the capital subsidy. That means please develop assets, please develop innovative solutions. And if you have any such kind of solutions, we are going to provide you the funding. So remember, funding is in three parts. Stipend one time cash assistance and third time is the capital subsidy if you are developing any particular kind of asset we are going to support you understood now let's see what are the components under this particular scheme so one member of the family who is having the age of 18 or more they are eligible for one time cash assistance of rupees 40000 to identified manual scavengers next is we are having skill development training program Obviously, the aim of this particular uh, initiative is to provide them the alternative employment, right? So, in order to provide them alternative employment, we have to provide them the skill development as well. And for that skill development, they are also going to receive a stipend of the 3000 rupees per month whosoever opts for such kind of training. Now, coming to the capital subsidy. See over here. So the maximum amount of capital subsidy that can be provided is 5 lakh rupees. Means the government is, uh, please uh, be with me in these particular points because they are a little bit confusing, right? So underst understand with me, government is going to give maximum 5 lakh rupees out of its pocket, right? Your project cost can range from 5 lakh to 15 lakh, 20 lakhs, etc, etc. Project cost could range like that. But government has said that we are going to provide you the maximum, maximum amount of assistance, 5 lakh rupees. Five More than 5 lakh rupees will not come out of the government's pocket. Now, number one thing, suppose if your project cost is up to 5 lakh rupees, the kind of project you are developing for this rehabilitation as well as uh, any kind of technology development, if the project cost is up to 5 lakh rupees, then government is saying take 2.5 lakhs from us, 50% of your project cost. Whatever you are incurring in your project, take 50% of that. I hope, is that clear? 
In this case, government is just going to provide you maximum 2.5 lakhs. If your project is up to 5 lakhs. Next is, suppose if your project is ranging from 5 lakhs to 15 lakhs project. Suppose your project is for 10 lakh. You went to the government. You said to the government that, okay, we are establishing this particular project. Government said that I am going to give you 2.5 lakhs plus 25% of the remaining project cost. So maximum capital subsidy will be 5 lakh. 2.5 lakhs, 7.5 lakh will be remaining, right? 7.5 multiplied by 25%. whatever is your remaining project cost and this amount cannot exceed 5 lakhs. Remember that. This amount cannot exceed 5 lakhs. That's what your government is saying. And next for group projects. If there are many people coming together and they are establishing group projects for them government can give 3.75 lakh per beneficiaries. So that is the maximum assistance that you can demand from the government now two more things over here see normally government is saying that 15 lakhs could be the maximum project cost but if there are group beneficiaries that means maximum five beneficiaries are there then projects up to 50 lakhs also can be allowed up to five maximum group members apart from them there is a rate of interest of five percent per annum that will be charged and four percent per annum will be charged for the women beneficiaries moratorium period is two years and the loan repayment will be five years for projects up to five lakh and seven years for the project up to above the 5 lakhs. So remember this, once you get the amount of the loan, the government cannot say immediately, now please now uh, refund me, uh, please now start paying the installment. Government will not say this. Government says that, okay, we have given you the loan. Now take your time, establish the project. Once pro the project is started, right, you are getting the revenue, wait for two years. After two years, please start repaying us if you are amount of loan it depends on the amount of loan what is your project cost if your project cost is 5 lakh rupees then please refer please give the installments within five years and if the project cost is above 5 lakhs then you have to give us the installment in the seven years that will be the repayment period right and the last and important piece of information is the wait Last and important piece of information is district level vigilance committees for the rehabilitation of the manual scavengers. So these particular committees, they have to be constituted on a district level. That's what I wanted to tell you. And next we have committee headed by secretary of ministry of social justice of social justice and empowerment for the implementation, right? So these particular committees will be headed like that. And this is the end of your scheme for the manual scavengers. Please remember the important pieces of information. I hope that after reading this, there is nothing else left that needs to be covered by you. Now, moving on to the next scheme that we have. Scheme for economic empowerment of the DNTs. Now, this particular scheme is called as the SEED, right? Whose empowerment we are going to do over here? So we are doing the empowerment of our denotified as well as the uh, nomadic tribes. Understood? So this scheme was launched in the February 15, 2022. A relatively newer scheme and hence we should be having a detailed information about this. Now what is the aim? We want to empower denotified tribes, nomadic tribes as well as the semi-nomadic communities 200 crore is the outlay the period of implementation remains same from 2021 till 2026 right eligibility is 
all those families who are having an income from all sources 2.5 lakhs or less they are going to be benefited by this particular scheme but there is one more condition you should not be availing any other kind of benefit from the central government or the state government related schemes right understood now next is implementation implementation is going to be through the online portal if anyone wants to register then they can directly register from there next important thing is see in all these kinds of scheme remember one thing direct benefit transfer is going to be implemented there is no alternative for that that is uh, that is understood that is given in any kind of scheme right understood so that's what they are saying that the funds will be transferred directly to the beneficiaries account and apart from the uh, what you can say this particular ministry we also have some other implementing agencies other implementing agencies ministry of rural development national rural livelihood mission national health authority uh, yesterday or day before yesterday one student was uh, mentioning in the comment that uh, related to portion scheme there was a doubt that ministry of education is also doing it as well as ministry of women and child development is also doing it so who what is the case so remember this particular thing that whenever a scheme is formulated obviously there is an implementing ministry that ministry is ultimately responsible for this scheme like in case of portion scheme it is ministry of women and child development which is responsible for that particular scheme but at the same time where we are going to establish portion abhiyan for the school going children right so ministry of education has to be involved that's why the portion scheme that we have studied is in the both ministries document so remember no scheme uh, sometimes many of the scheme they yes only one in ministry is involved but many of the times we also need the involvement of the adjacent ministries to establish the scheme correctly so you see over here that not just the ministry of social justice we you also have ministry of rural development national rural livelihood mission as well as the national health authority collaborating under this particular scheme why they are collaborating just in a few moments you will get to know when we are going to read the components of this particular scheme now what is the scheme's name the scheme's name is seed we are going to provide the benefits for the denotified tribes understood now what is the category over here that all those families who are having a income of below 2.5 lakhs they are eligible so eligibility conditions remember that your uh, what is the name of the scheme please also remember that and now we are going to see the four components of the benefit that we are getting under this particular scheme right now number one benefit is the educational empowerment for any kind of upliftment education is the most crucial one and hence the empowerment of the coaching for the denotified students right see over here what are our objectives we want to provide them the free coaching free coaching for what if they want to appear in the competitive examinations like professional courses medicines engineering mba etc right understood this so remember this one thing over here we are not just providing for the government examination we are also providing for the private examinations fine so uh, your cat or je or your medicine related examinations now next see over here target approximately 6250 students will be provided free coaching in the 5 years now the, this particular uh, information related to targets we are going to see in the various schemes right uh, from now onwards whatever schemes we are going to study uh, we will going to be see this particular piece of information over here so just understand this information has been given to complete your knowledge or to so that you can know that what is the coverage of this particular component otherwise if when you are reading it yourself you can just do please do not give that much importance to this 
right that oh okay 6250 students will be covered etc etc no not very much important next is funds and durations the total funds will be spent in five years will be the 50 crore rupees what is the total funding that we have under this particular ministry oh sorry this particular scheme remember that as well so you will get to know that okay 200 crores has been divided like this next is health insurance related component so to provide the financial assistance to national health authority along with the state health agencies why because we want to provide the health insurance cover to our denotified tribes now how question can be formulated so now we are going to see the four components over here that they okay there is an education component there is a health component as well now the examiner could ask you that which of the following components are included under the seed scheme for the denotified tribes so you uh, instead also if you remember this then you are automatically going to remember that what are the specific components so next is what is the target of yours so 4 lakh 44,000 families we want to cover under this particular initiative. What is the benefit? So, we have already read Ayushman Bharat. So, 5 lakh per family per year will be provided to all these tribes. Denotified your nomadic tribes as well as the semi-nomadic tribes. Correct? The benefit? Whatever benefit we are uh, taking under the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, the similar kind of benefit we are going to provide to denotified tribes as well. How easy it is, right? You just have to remember that what was the benefit under the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. Now moving ahead, what does the fund spend? Fund spend will be 49 crores. Next is to facilitate livelihood. The third component apart from education, Apart from health, now we are coming to the employment. Now we are talking real. So in this particular case, see over here. The decline of traditional occupations has exhibited their poverty. Obviously, see, uh, as machines have come, the traditional occupations, whatever they were doing related to the collection of uh, your uh, fruits of the forest etc or formulating some handicrafts item etc etc these kind of occupations have not having that much kind of relevance in the today's time so in order to that we have came with the financial assistance under the national rural livelihood mission in association with the state rural livelihoods mission um, what we were doing under the national rural livelihood mission can someone tell me what we are doing under the National Rural Livelihood Mission. Any answers? What we exactly want to do under National Rural Livelihood Mission? Any kind of answers? Uh, don't you guys remember that we talked about the formation of self-help groups, right? SHG formation. See, yes, but SHG formation is also a crucial component over here. National Urban Livelihood Mission, National Rural Livelihood Mission. That is under the, <laughs> okay, fine. So see over here, what are the funds and duration? Approximately 2000 clusters, they are going to get benefit under this component in the five years. These clusters are related to what? You are going to create the self-help groups. These self-help groups, they are going to be formed among the persons themselves, right? And next step is the SHG bank linkage program. You link the banks, you provide the kind of funding, any kinds of employment that they want to pursue, they can. So that is was the employment related component. So you see, every component is linked with a particular component that we have already studied earlier. Like in the health related component, Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana came 
in the uh, your uh, livelihood related component nrlm came and now talking about the housing so housing we already have a mainstream scheme called as the pm awas yojana so we are going to use the benefits of the same scheme to provide the benefit to denotified tribes so let's see at present a very large number of families who are belonging to such communities they are without the permanent shelter when i am saying this i am talking about both urban as well as the rural areas so how we are going to give them the benefit so it has been proposed that we are going to mark a separate outlay under the pradhan mantri awas yojana we are going to provide the separate outlay to support specific importance for providing houses in to the denotified tribes who are living in the rural areas and who have already not taken benefits of the pradhan mantri awas yojana now what are the benefits so admissible support is 1.2 lakh in the plains and 1.3 lakhs in the hilly areas now there is a small piece of information in this small piece of information as per me only this is uh, crucial but we have to fulfill the context as well so let's see national commission for denotified semi nomadic tribe was constituted in the february 2014 why it was constituted it was having a mandate denotified tribes you have joined late because uh, in the start of the lecture itself i have discussed what are the denotified tribes fine so please uh, be on time uh, join the lecture on time so you will get all the informations now see over here remember at the start of this lecture we talked about that okay there is a national commission for the denotified nomadic and semi nomadic tribes right and i also said to you that it has it was in operation for just 3 year period from 2015 to 2019 and right now we are having a department for the welfare of such kind of people now understand that what was the work it has performed in those particular 3 years so it has prepared a report it has prepared a state wise list of caste which are belonging to such categories right so this was its mandate this was the work it was supposed to do so state wise list uh, it has prepared and as per its report there are total of 1262 communities those which have identified like this out of them 425 are the denotified tribes 810 are nomadic tribes and 27 semi nomadic tribes correct so this is the note and out of them highest of such kind of tribes you are going to see in the state of karnataka so all those people who are watching this le lecture from the starting can they tell me that which state has got highest sc population scheduled caste population which state has the highest scheduled caste population in india tell me that i am waiting for your answers anyone no very bad now i'll go back see please be very clear that what all are your scheduled caste right backward classes apart from that someone is saying up someone is saying mp you guys are not clear about it see this was a first piece of information which i told you isn't it this was the very first piece of information that's why that's why i say that please join the lecture from the starting 
right you have to remember not uh, for others it was not important like your senior citizens etc you do not have to remember that senior citizens are in which state highest number of senior citizens or in the which state we have got the highest number of uh, disabled people that is not important but yes caste wise data is important so first of all for sc we have already done that next is your denotified tribes in the karnatak right and when we were talking about pvtgs when we were talking about pvtgs at that time also i asked so how many uh, pvtgs are there in india 75 pvtgs are there particularly vulnerable tribal groups right out out of them in india 18 states and one ut is having the particularly vulnerable tribal groups even out of that odisha is having the highest number of particularly vulnerable tribal groups so these are the pieces of information please remember them they can be very handy for you see we, we never know that what kind of information are being asked so hence please be prepared from uh, every kind of way next scheme that we have is called the smile scheme support for marginalized individuals for livelihood and enterprise now what we are going to talking about here is we are going to talk about the transgenders they are also currently in the news for the marriage related rights right so they have uh, this particular act has been decriminalized but even after that they have not got any kind of marriage related rights so they have been in the news right now as well so what is the scheme that has been formulated the first piece of information that i want to tell you over here is that it is a central sector scheme fine it is a central sector scheme next is in the year 2019 after homosexuality was decriminalized in india after that our ministry of social justice and empowerment they have formulated transgender persons act 2019 fine uh, the commission there is a commission also that was constituted under this particular act but that is not a statutory commission that commission has got the executive related powers so there are there were short, many shortcomings under this particular act but still there are some things that were established and that were uh, aimed by the virtue of this act so see what were our objectives by formulating this particular initiative so our objective was that we should be identifying the transgender persons again a controversial thing next is non discrimination against the transgender persons in the educational institutions employment healthcare services etc so these were our twin objectives and any other objectives are surrounded within this next is according to the 2011 census 487000 persons they have been classified as others and believe me it is a way much less figures because because of the discrimination because of your obviously societal pressures uh, the number of transgender people are much much higher than this particular figure which has been given on our census right the next thing is ministry has launched the central center scheme spine so you have to remember the name of the scheme like seed initiative seed initiative is for which particular category of people denotified tribes nomadic tribes as well and smile initiative is for whom smile initiative is for the transgenders so what we are going to see over here is that what all are the initiatives that has been taken by the government just watch it over so the scheme includes two sub schemes what are the two sub schemes first of all there is a scheme for the rehabilitation number 1 we are going to rehabilitate them and number 2 what we are going to do is rehabilitation of the beggars who does the act of begging uh that is a debatable topic why central government is against it central government says that we have formulated so many laws by keeping this thing in mind that there in a marriage union there are two people one is male and the other one is female this is what central government says right so obviously central government is against it but supreme court is leaning in the favor of the same sex marriages 
right uh, because it considers that everyone has a right to equality and everyone has the similar application of marriage laws that's why supreme court is leaning in the favor and yes they do come under the same sex marriages right uh, this community is a very big we cannot uh, uh, restrict them understand so there are so many categories of people who lie under this particular community and hence they are uh, right now fighting for their rights not yet been decided but it's a controversial topic now next see the budget and time 365 crores for the scheme starting from 2021 to 2026 now what we are going to do the selection as per the criteria of so this piece of information is important who all are the selected ones under this particular scheme so number one the beneficiary should be a transgender person as notified by government of india they should be holding a transgender certificate and identity card issued by a national portal for transgender person so this certification process was also very much in the news uh, in the years of 2019 2020 and still in 2021 uh, why because for being a female or for being a male, no one requires uh, what you can say approval from the central government. We identify as a female or a male. But this has been mandated for the transgender persons that they should be getting a certificate. So again, uh, not very great kind of thing, but still the government has mandated it. So number one eligibility is this and the number two eligibility is that you should be not having such kind of benefits from the others. Other scheme under the state government as well as the central government. I guess this is the universal condition that you should be availing the benefits of just one kind of scheme for yourself, right? Not for every other scheme for you which you are eligible. Next is now the first component related to the rehabilitation comprehensive rehabilitation what we are going to talk about it so under this uh, transgender persons also demanded the reservation but no kind of reservation has been provided to them under the act remember this piece of information now next is what kind of education related support government is going to provide them so Scholarships for students who are studying in the 9th and till the post-graduation level. Scholarships will be avoid, uh, awarded whether they are studying in the government or the private higher secondary school, colleges or university. No non-applicability. It is not said that you should be studying in a government college only. Even after that, the it is also going to cover the technical vocational courses in the ITIs, inter, industrial training centers, polytechnics, etc. Next, any course of less than one year duration is not covered. The course has to be more than one year. This is an important thing. Next, all graduates, postgraduates, diploma courses, which is recognized by the UGC or India Council of Technical Education, they shall be covered. Next, the candidate should not be receiving any other central or government funded scholarship. A sum of 13,500 it will be provided as a post metric, P metric scholarship for the eligible transgender students. And the scholarship can be availed by uh, registering on the portal. Now next thing, see, skill development and livelihood. The first benefit that we provided them is relating to the education. Now the next benefit which is going to be provided is related to the skill development. So there is a scheme that we are going to cover after this particular scheme called as the PM Daksh. Right? So skill development will be provided to transgenders under this particular scheme called as the PM Daksh. What is PM Daksh? So we are going to cover the scheme just after this, one, uh, this scheme of the SMILE. The National Skill Development Corporation and Sector Skills Council, they are going to help in the course related things. And Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship and National Institute for Entrepreneurship, they are also going to assist in the entrepreneurship related training the government india is going to fund obviously the 100 percent of the expenditure under this particular scheme 
Why? Because it is a central sector scheme. Next component is the composite medical health. A very important component or much demanded component, right? Uh, everyone in the transgender community needed it. So a comprehensive package of 5 lakh convergence will be given with the PMJ. PMJ for the gender reaffirmation surgeries through selected hospitals. Now PMJ Jan Arogya Yojana. We have already we have already studied that and lastly there is the component called as housing in the form of the Garima Grehe. So please remember the name for which kind of community with this Garima Grehe are operational. This is an important piece of information that you should be remembering right the shelter homes will be provided in these kind of shelter homes obviously food clothing recreational skill development as well as medical support will be provided they are going to be managed by the project management committees the district magistrate will be the chairperson of such project management committees very important and NGOs, community-based organizations, they are eligible for setting up the Garima Grehe. For a single Garima Grehe, a cost of 36,46,500 will be provided. Fine. So, this scheme has not been ended yet. There are one other component under this particular scheme. And we also have to read about a lot many more schemes under this particular initiative. Right. So with that, uh, this is it in this particular session. Thank you so much for joining in. Please do not forget to like this video and please uh, stay tuned for tomorrow as well and try to uh, join the class around 10 a.m. because it is important. Otherwise, you guys keep asking that ma'am, what is that? What is this? Right. So please, uh, koshish kijiye that you join the class on time. Thank you.